Life team hunts for a living dinosaur. A relic lying hidden for over 65 million years. They have just 15 minutes to find it. This dark underworld is a place of legend. But today, something very real is lurking nearby. they run short of air and the surface is 110 meters away. of the coelacanth, an ancient fish lost in time. unit deploys off the Tanzanian coast. Their assignment? To descend 100 meters into the twilight zone to track down the coelacanth, a living dinosaur thought to be a missing link in evolution. Robert Witten is the team leader. He's ex-military with over 500 hours experience at this depth. Daniel Stevenson specializes in deep water filming and communications. Peter Tim is their guide to the submarine caves. He's the only crew member to come face to face with the creature. Over the past few years, the local fish market here at Tanga has seen strange catches coming in. Since the introduction of deep water fishing nets, over 80 coelacanths have been caught here. The fisherman's catch rate surpasses anywhere else in the world. This lost coelacanth colony could be hundreds strong. Team leader Robert Witten just has to find out where they are. It looks like a grouper. See the orange fish? Yeah, but it's big. Big fish. But a big tail. The fishermen all point to one far off island. Could this be the coelacanth sanctum the divers are searching for? There's another reason why the team is here in Tanga. One of the creatures was caught recently, and it's still here, frozen. Rob wants to see it before it's shipped off to researchers. But really what's remarkable about this fish For him, it's a profound moment. This is the first time he's seen one. It's a bulky fish. And the eye is huge, so they can see in the dark gloom of their home abyss. The prehensile fins, the archaic teeth. This is a creature thought to be extinct, a missing link of evolutionary history, right here under his hands. 
that it's not the first to be discovered. This is where the hunt began. Marjorie Courtney Latimer is the curator of a small coastal museum. She's alerted on the return of the deep sea fishing trawlers. Marjorie is always on the lookout for any unusual specimens. Good morning, East London Museum. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. I'm on my way. This shipment contains something extraordinary. has never seen anything like it before. The creature is over five feet long, around 130 pounds, with strange iridescent markings and fins that look like limbs. Although dead, there's no blood, no secretion from the mouth, nose, or body, common with all other fish. What is this creature? Marjorie contacts fish expert and professor J.L.B. Smith with a sketch and description of her mysterious discovery. Dear Mr. Smith, I had the most queer-looking specimen brought to notice yesterday which I had removed to our taxidermist as soon as I could. It is coated in heavy scales, almost armor-like. The fins resemble limbs and are scaled right up to a fringe of filament. I would be so pleased if you could let me know what you think. Wishing you all the happiness for the season. Yours sincerely, Marjorie Courtney Latimer. Specimen bears similarities to an ancient lobed finned fish Smith has seen before, but not in a picture, in a fossil. The limb like fins, the large armored scales and bony plated head, and a tail that no living fish possesses. This predator was thought to have gone extinct with the dinosaurs. Four hundred million years ago, long before dinosaurs ruled the earth, life thrived in the ocean. One unique group, the lobe-finned fish, possessed revolutionary adaptations. A primitive spine ran the length of their body a bony, plated skull, with air spaces for the potential ability to hear above the surface. A hinged jaw with teeth coated in human-like enamel, and fleshy, scaled fins that protruded from their skeleton like limbs. Over time, 
Some evolved the ability to gulp air, and their articulated bony fins developed into legs. These became the first land vertebrates. While others, like the coelacanths, remained in the ocean. But 65 million years ago, the coelacanths, along with the dinosaurs, vanished from the fossil record. strange creature begins to rot, and with no word from Smith, Marjorie must act quickly. A solution of diluted formalin is her only hope to preserve the specimen. There's nothing else she can do but wait. Later, a telegram finally arrives from Smith. It's too late. She's gutted and cleaned the specimen. Without the innards, the fish's true origins are inconclusive. If Rob and his team uncover a new coelacanth colony, it would be a groundbreaking event. This is the first deep dive crew to explore these waters. Like deep space astronauts, the divers use specialized equipment to survive the deadly environment of the ocean depths. Coelacanths hide within this dark underworld.
despite the dynamite fishing above, they keep going. the real twilight zone. A lost world at the farthest reach of the sun. By now, compressed gases are building up in their blood. If they stay too long, they may never make it back up. We've only got three minutes left. to Marjorie's letter, Smith must resolve his suspicions once and for all, and come face to face with this monster of the deep. Smith can barely believe his eyes. There is not a shadow of a doubt, scale by scale, bone by bone, fin by fin. 
It is a true coelacanth. The discovery spreads around the world as the most important zoological find of the century. But there is a problem. With no internal organs to describe, many questions remain unanswered. Is this creature the missing link in human evolution? Where did it come from? And what else might be alive down there? Smith becomes obsessed with finding a second complete specimen. The hunt is on. The dynamite fishing is too dangerous. The dive team aborts their mission in Tanzania. They're now over 2,000 kilometers south off the coast of South Africa at Sudwana Bay. The diving here is much deeper than in Tanzania. The hunt for the coelacanth has already killed three divers. Rob Witten calls on the help of a pioneer in deep water exploration, Dr. Richard Pyle. He's discovered more new species of fish than any other diver. So this is where we're trying to go. So the currents have been going in this direction, and the winds have been blowing in this direction. And so we've been coming out to this they area. They must plan their dive perfectly. And trying to assess which way to drop so that we can drift in and land at this spot. The team must rapidly freefall almost 40 stories of open ocean and hit the narrow edge of the continental shelf into a chasm known as Jessa Canyon. They have to get to exactly the right spot, find the coelacanths, get footage, and get out of there as quickly as possible, all in about 10 or 15 minutes. A lot of things have to fall into place just perfectly to pull this off. More people have been to the moon than dive to these depths to face this living dinosaur. Apart from the extreme depth, what other dangers await the team in this twilight zone? The timing of their deployment is critical. The slightest miscalculation and the strong ocean currents can push them off their target and into the abyss. Hours of training and the dives in Tanzania will be invaluable now. Any mistakes at depth could be fatal.
team approaches the depth limit for any advanced diver. We've just passed 40 meters. Here we go. This is it. All good and dropping fast. the team out of the currents at 115 meters. Look, there's the edge. It's the rim of the continental shelf. Very few humans have been here. Richard discovers as many as 12 new species of fish each hour spent at these depths. Who knows what other large life forms lurk just out of sight? Coelacanth's hiding caves, emerging at night to prey on squid, eels, and small sharks. Food here is scarce, but the coelacanth has a special ability. It slows its metabolism to survive on as little as three teaspoons of food a day. have only six minutes left. We're running out of time, guys. Check every cave. The coelacanth's specially developed vision means it sees in near darkness. forces tiny gas bubbles into their bloodstream and tissues. If the gases do not escape slowly during their three-hour ascent, their blood will fizz like soda.
Time is up, and the team must abort the search. supply and must begin his ascent immediately. This search may be over, but the team is not out of trouble yet. Peter's almost out of air, and he's too far from the others for help to switch tanks. <laughs> the safety divers have to be quick. Far below, Peter is still in trouble. He takes his whole rig off underwater to reach the valve. Now he can breathe, but there's another problem. The other valve that controls his buoyancy is now behind him. He can't reach it. He rockets up towards the surface. If he ascends too fast, his lungs will explode. The safety divers release his trapped valve, but Peter begins to sink fast. He grabs hold of his boy line and pulls himself up from the depths. stabilizes his depth and begins his three-hour decompression. It's skill and experience that gets him out alive. Although they did not find the coelacanth this time, one thing is clear. This mission is not turning out to be easy. Fourteen years, Smith also fails in his search for a second coelacanth. Just before Christmas in 1952, he receives a cable from an acquaintance, Captain Eric Hunt, a trader across the Mozambique Channel. A local fisherman has caught the fish from Smith's poster. is over 1,500 kilometers away on the remote volcanic islands of the Comores. The Prime Minister himself makes an aircraft available. Smith is beside himself with excitement. This specimen could unlock the mystery of how life first walked onto land. If this is the original colony, does this ancient lair harbor other living dinosaurs? Smith 
pronounces the Comores as the home of the coelacanth. This is the BBC World And this myth goes unchallenged until now. Richard and his team still battle to find their first coelacanth. Each and every dive, they risk their lives, but to no avail. turn to weeks, and all hope of finding this living dinosaur begins to fade. Check everywhere. Everything rests on their final dive. Three, two, one, go! drop into the twilight zone once again. Temperature's dropping fast. submarines. primitive creatures that hide here can't be found at any other depth.
Nothing. The coelacanth can only survive in the cold, oxygen-rich waters found at these depths. But for the divers, every minute spent here could be their last. We're running out of time, guys. Check every cave. Three minutes, I'm counting. With only moments left, Peter separates from the group to explore one final cave. He disappears under the edge of the shelf. Something is wrong. The deep diver's 15 minute bottom time is up. But there is no sign of their surface marker boys. still at 116 meters, and Peter is still in the cave. Coelacanth's paired fins move as if it's walking through the water.
Its distinct and powerful three-lobed tail is found on no other living creature on Earth. This coelacanth may live over a hundred years in the cold, oxygen-rich waters of the twilight zone. The team's invaluable footage confirms that Sodwana is home to an established coelacanth colony. Richard and the team have their footage, and after an exhausting three and a half hour decompression, they finally break the surface, safe and humbled. That's a big fish. <laughs> That's a very big fish. It's a very big fish. Fantastic fish. Sir, thank you. As the team celebrates the success of their mission, <laughs> that was great. down below, the Sodwana coelacanths float quietly in the twilight zone. Who knows how many other deep locations are home to this living relic, a true survivor from eons gone by. JLB Smith searched his entire life for another coelacanth. Never did find one. These men are among the few humans on Earth ever to have seen one alive. It's a dream that Smith took to his grave, being face to face with a living dinosaur.